This is the Global Utsava of Soft Power, brought to you by the Center for Soft Power, with support from the ICCR and Svyasa University. We have come to the last day of our celebration, and I welcome you to this first session called Traversing Dimensions. At first, we didn't know what to call this, but then we realized that when you go on these journeys across this hallowed country, it is traversing a dimension. There is a chance that you will achieve a different state of being when you go to some of these hallowed spaces, whether you want it or not. So we felt that the best name would be Traversing Dimensions. And uh, this is all about experiential tourism. And in the Indian uh, ethos, going on a yatra has been a very important part of our lives. So we felt that this was a very important session and uh, we thought we'd make it very special. And we have two special guests for this event. We will start with Dr. Nagendraji, who is the Chancellor of the Svyasa University, the President of Vivekananda Anusandana Kendra, Samasthana, sorry, and also the Chancellor of the Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anusandana Samasthana University, Svyasa University. He is widely recognized across the world as a yoga guru. And uh, my relationship with uh, Dr. Nagendra goes way, way back. And uh, I must say that he is one of those people who has uh, been very encouraging of everything that I do. I mean, uh, the first uh, workshop that we conducted there was uh, rather, I should say, insane. When we had uh, 
a dozen dance teachers and 61 students from across the country come and uh, practice and uh, you know uh, run a workshop and uh, we got all uh, support from them and that has kept us going to do all these kind of mind blowing things and we know that you know there's always somebody who has our back so sir uh, i request you to start and say a few words thank you very much vijayalakshmi ji should i congratulate you or your entire team for the fantastic program that you have organized from august 15 to today It is something marvelous you have been able to have a wide spectrum of the indian heritage starting from arts and science universality of the indian values the insights of the soft power and through the panels you talked about food diet yoga ayurveda naturopathy and what not and the literature the dance the music and the spiritual dimension of uh, ramayana mahabharata the epics and the spirituality the upanishads and you did not leave the areas of weaving and dyeing embroidery sports travel and what not such a vast area that you covered and naturally it needed all this uh, 27 days to do that so i place on record your wonderful contributions to bring this heritage to such a grand dimension and as all of us know my dear brothers and sisters participating in this program that india has its greatest contribution in the field of yoga spirituality and this is the greatest contribution of india to the whole world today just like we have science and technology at the great contribution of the west yoga spirituality is the great contribution of india and over the 400 years as all of us know modern science has grown to such a great extent that we have been able to unravel the mysteries of this physical world in its totality we today know that everything that we have is nothing but the matter made out of molecules atoms protons neutrons fundamental particles and then what are they made of they are all made of packets of energy called quarks so everything that we see in the physical world is nothing but energy 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 and you can calculate how much of energy is in given matter tremendous amount of energy packed into so called matter if i convert this small key it can burn up the whole of this uh, western part of bangalore itself and we also understood the laws that govern them newton's laws of motion that's called as classical mechanics and then we understood for things which are much higher in speed like an electron swirling around the nucleus then you have to go to the higher laws called quantum mechanics theory of relativity and so on therefore in a sense we understood everything about the physical world therefore anything physical we have been a big success putting man on the moon building skyscrapers underwater tunnels information technology and large number of uh, the medical things surgeries 5000 types of surgeries we can replace almost every part of the body even we are racing to change even our genes for the gene therapy everything we have made possible then what is happening to science science is trying to go beyond the physical is there something like prana what is that we call as mind the emotions the intellect emotion and is there something like spirituality the consciousness into this region of subtlety and causality the science is moving wonderful book turning point by fritz of capra talks about these dimensions so the science after 400 years is moving toward things which are subtle and causal in nature and in india thousands and probably millions of years back our ancient masters fathom the whole of this creation they understood that the whole creation is not just physical physical is only a small part of the whole dimension then in the upanishad called the taittiriya upanishad and many other upanishads they consider the five layers of the whole creation the physical body is called the annamaya kosha then beyond that we have the pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vignanamaya kosha anandamaya kosha 
the five bodies you may call or koshas you can call for every individual we are not just a physical body we have four more bodies then in the world at large we have the physical world created by the electromagnetic field then we have the bioplasmic field much bigger and more subtle then we have the astral field or the mind field then we have the information field called the vignanamaya kosha and then we have the bliss world that is dimension there are five layers of the whole creation and all these five layers are in continual interactions with themselves so the whole creation which is called a jagat that goes on changing and changing and changing for example the physical body you know continuously changing a billion cells get created every day a billion cells get destroyed every day and therefore by the time we reach here within a few minutes all our bodies are changed what to talk about the mind and the emotions and the intellect and everything changing 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 change in the feature of this entire world jagat jan jagat that's how the jagat has been defined but is there something beyond this change and that is our original state and that is called pure consciousness you may call it as reality it's called the absolute and our people understood this which is beyond all space time causation and all the changes it is beyond the jagat and that in patanjali terms is called the purusha and that is called the reality and in vedanta it's called the moksha and in personally it called as the kaivalya that's our original state that original state is a state of infinite bliss knowledge power freedom and how to read that patanjali said you have to calm down the mind silence the mind go to the very source from where the thoughts come and stay in that silence more and more more and more and that takes us from the pranamaya to manomaya vignana anandamaya kosha anandamaya kosha is a state of absolute silence and wonderful silence so parame vyoman pratishtita as he said and if you can go there then all the power is going to come to us so swami vivekananda rightly emphasized the goal of life is to manifest that divinity manifest that power within us manifest that perfection already in man as he said the whole education system essentially is meant for bringing out that perfection already in man he said therefore in all aspects of our indian culture this was knit as the basic foundation on which we build whether it's science or music or dance or dramatics or whether it's archaeology everywhere this fundamental dimension has been put forth therefore the objective of all these things that we have in our indian culture in arts and science is meant to bring about the transformation of the human being from his normal level to become great super divine human beings and reach the divinity itself and manifest that divinity in our day to day life that can bring peace on earth that can bring the whole world into an ideal situation vasudha eva kutumbakam we become a huge family and we build ideal social orders featured by peace tranquility and efficiency health and wealth and all things are going to come so in all the programs that vijayalakshmi is so beautifully organized these dimensions have come out with such vividity that we have the foundation just like modern science has brought everything in the physical is made out of this loss and the structure everything is energy and the loss cover in them similarly the ancient culture ancient creation has been made by pure consciousness and the loss that govern them the trinity that is the creation the sustenance and the destruction so that forms the trinity of the loss and therefore we have the loss we have the structure of the whole creation unraveled by this great knowledge base and that has to be brought into all fields whether it's education whether it's health whether it is uh, the travel everywhere therefore people who come here first they come here and fathom the dimensions related to them and in tourism they come here they study this thing and understand the subtleties as to what they have to see when they go to a particular tirtha yatra a temple or other places and you can fathom that subtlety because unseen normally because there is so much of diversity in india and everything is different here languages are different people are different and places are different architecture is different culture is different everything is different 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 but there is a unity in diversity and that unity in diversity is this basic understanding that everything is basically the pure consciousness as a manifest it comes so once you understand this you understand the grandeur of the indian culture and the indian science and 
people fathoming this dimension are the great maharshis and the rishis and the spiritual masters and these are the celebrities that our india always possesses and this dimension has been brought forth and has to be unraveled to the public at large unfortunately our entire education system has not been able to bring out this dimension in india we had the gurukula system which used to have this dimension but unfortunately when we were ruled by the british they did not understand the grandeur of this thing and they thought there are only two states of the mind either the mind is lazy lethargic silent calm peaceful or the mind is very fast full of energy vitality dynamism and they could not understand that the third dimension which is quite different from the laziness and lethargy that is the silent mind the calm mind the tranquil mind and this was particularly called the chitta vritti nirodha and that dimension has to be fathomed and in education system we have to bring in this dimension therefore our university is now geared to bring about these things from 2002 our university s vyasa swami vivekananda yoga anusandhan samsthan has been working on that and bringing the best of the east with the best of the west bringing out this entire knowledge base that we have with the, the knowledge of the west that is modern scientific research we built the best research lab in the world and called the anveshna we can measure all aspects of this thing not only what is happening in the body what is happening in the brain atomic parameters endocrine parameter and the genetic level and biochemical level, all we can measure on one front and other side we have got the measurement to measure what is prana the mind the emotions everything we can measure and that the most unique lab that we have built and we have the holistic vision and we use this technology to meet the challenges of the modern era modern era of ncds non communicable diseases stress is a major challenge all this thing can be handled very effectively only when you have the total wisdom base because our challenges are not just merely physical they are all multi dimensional physical mental emotional intellectual and therefore unless you have a holistic solution you cannot solve the problem and that's what we do and this is called as yoga so vivekananda said yoga is not merely a physical exercise like asana it is a science of holistic living featured by the four streams of yoga he said nana yoga raj yoga bhakti yoga karma yoga nana yoga is the path of intellect the path of emotions is bhakti yoga the path of will power is raj yoga and to bring all this thing to our day to day life is karma yoga to convert every action we do into a yoga that is the secret that he unravels in the karma yoga so using this dimension we can build the total personality started with our work in education field and the health field stress management and dance music and others in our university we have five divisions division of yoga spirituality division of yoga life sciences the management studies the physical sciences and humanities and our vijayalakshmi is one of our honored faculty in our svasa in the humanities and who has been doing such fantastic work and through this webinar she has been able to bring that vision of the totality of the grandeur of indian culture which goes beyond just the physical understanding of uh, the modern world so congratulations vijay lakshmi for your fantastic work that you have done for these 27 days it's a big tapas you have done bringing all the people from all over the world and many ambassadors and commissioners and what not and celebrities you have brought they are something wonderful i marvel at your capacity and your team once again placing on record your contributions and please continue and namaste that's your thing dhanyawad thank you so much sir it is just the blessing of elders and ishwara that this work is being done sir so now we will move on to uh, let me introduce uh, a dear friend dr uh, usha rk she is the director of the iccr uh that is the, it's called the jawaharlal nehru cultural center in moscow she is a former member secretary of the intangible cultural heritage ministry of culture and has the credit of securing the nominations of yoga kumbha mela and uh, varanasi as a creative city in unesco representatives list dance became her companion during the days of her schooling a pioneer in the arts organizing sphere she has carved a niche for herself as an impresario of formidable caliber and competence over to you madam and thank you so much for being so cooperative and coming whenever we invite you thank you thank you so much uh, vijay lakshmi uh, may i first uh, you know thank you for giving me these wonderful opportunities to share 
some of the thoughts that uh, and uh, the experiences that uh, you know i'm uh, getting through these little uh, uh, opportunities that i get from the government of india um, as you said the uh, you know work that i did in the ministry of culture is something like a landmark in my life uh, the contribution of uh, working on the nominations uh, itself uh, you know actually the the title that you have given traversing dimensions i actually traversed a lot of dimensions when i moved into government uh the the dimension with which we looked at the arts as people or as performers or as organizers was completely different from the way uh, it was uh, looked at uh, from the government perspective or the ministry perspective so uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, things i moved from thought processes to the way we look at it from uh, a national perspective and uh, then today the post that i'm occupying has really moved me from the national perspective to a global perspective so uh, what are the dimensions of soft power um, that uh, we can use in a manner that uh, we are able to communicate to the global platform that uh, there are these dimensions that people should actually look at when they think of the word india or bharat what is uh, this country and uh, what are the strengths that we have and uh, in what manner can we show these dimensions in a truly uh, you know global perspective looking at it from uh, the world view uh, not primarily looking at it as uh, you know uh, uh, little little uh, uh, sort of islands but uh, look at it from a completely 360 degree perspective uh, when from the time i have come to moscow i have understood one thing that the one common dimension as uh, uh, you know it's an honor to be with uh, to have heard uh, shri nagendra ji just now because yoga is like a, a key word uh, that moves around in this uh, part of uh, the world uh, in russia yoga is like a, like a god for them you know and especially in the time of pandemic i think the dimension of yoga the breathing the fact that uh, our uh, immune system works because of all these things that we do uh, the kind of uh, intake that we uh, you know food intake that we have all these dimensions have suddenly started coming out in a very big way and uh, people across russia have started uh, uh, you know looking at us from a completely totally different perspective uh, yoga though they were practicing it as uh, you know uh, as exercises or asanas today the dimension of uh, a spiritual or a completely internal view point is something that is now coming out slowly especially in today's time all the smaller aspects of our country uh, when you talk about uh, even the you know small uh, issues like like we say namaste or the kind of food we are eating or the way we behave uh, what is humility all these dimensions of our country are now being seen uh, as a part of uh, a global perspective so uh, people across the world today are uh, you know uh, feeling that this country bharat is something that uh, everybody has to look up to and see what are the different dimensions that we are bringing to the table uh, when we talk of tourism Uh, yes we have been showcasing our country in the most beautiful uh, way we talk about uh, you know different kinds of tourism that we have we talk about religious tourism we talk about spiritual tourism we are speaking about medical tourism artistic tourism all these uh, aspects that are there of our country have been showcased for a long time but today i think in the times that we are not able to traverse physically to any country we have still managed to showcase all our thoughts uh, which i think is the pure essence of this country in the most dynamic manner through all the web uh, work that we have been doing we we have crossed the path of uh, just trying to be physical but trying to bring it on to the global platform through the dimensions of internet and web uh, webinars etc but actually showcasing the best of our country through all these things bringing all the great minds who are able to communicate and speak what is uh, you know really wanted 
to uh, by the world across so they want to hear what we can say what we can you know uh, move, give uh, different kinds of uh, uh, you know feedback to them what we do in our country what we would like others also to look at and highlight i think we've really worked on this aspect very beautifully if there's any question that you would like to ask me vijayalakshmi i'm i would like to answer it thank you so much madam uh, we will ask you the questions a little uh, into the discussion itself if that's all right sure. by you sure. thank so, you thank you very much and uh, i did not mention and it will be uh, really a failing on my part if i do not mention that the uh, invocation was specially record recorded for us uh, by uh, sanjay subramaniam's uh, student his name is uh, uh, jayant and uh, that really set the stage for this whole thing i mean uh, here he was uh, singing about uh, lord krishna and jagadwat darana now on to varsha yeah uh, namaste all we are very pleased to have amongst us shri ayush rathi who will be the chair for today's session traversing dimensions a brief introduction about ayush Ayush is fascinated by India's rich history and its vibrant social and cultural landscape. So much so that after graduating from IIT Bombay and IIM Ahmedabad and working with the Boston Consulting Group, he decided to follow his passion and co-founded Rubaru Works in 2015 to explore the vibrant Indian heritage and ease its in-depth discovery. They are now a team of 22 storytellers. 150 plus cultural experts offering immersive travel experiences across eight indian uh, destinations let us now sit back and let our speakers take us on a tour ayush over to you thank you thank you varsha for that uh, very warm introduction and uh, also thank you uh, to the entire team of center for soft power for organizing this beautiful festival and for inviting me to be a part of it uh, and also namaste everyone uh, to all our attendees and uh, the panelists a very warm welcome to this discussion on traversing dimensions through travel travel in india isn't just about ticking some destinations uh, off the bucket list right if you resonate uh, with the vibe of a place here make inquiries into its history culture and traditions it is possible to feel inside of you the sum total of all the experiences of its inhabitants across time in fact so profound is this value proposition of travel in india that it has resulted in the creation of a very unique field which is that of yatras like vijay lakshmi ji mentioned since time immemorial people here have been embarking on journeys to and through sacred spaces or teerths set in remote locations across diverse geographical landscapes all of them however eventually lead to one common destination a journey within during my college years i had the fortune of getting its flavor while traveling across the country uh, journeys to kumbh mela pushkar mela varanasi across madhya pradesh and rajasthan had a notable impact on me so fascinated i became with the super power that i decided to explore india full time and you know try and ease its in depth discovery with the interested and uh, that is how rubru walks came into being and today i am thrilled to be chairing this discussion with four brilliant panelists let me give uh, all of you a brief introduction uh, to them so we have uh, among us uh, first miss Ra uh, miss rashmi savant who is an acclaimed entrepreneur leading a successful enterprise culture angan that works towards the conservation of biodiversity environment arts crafts and promoting rural livelihood she conceptualized and organized the first ever broad city based international cultural festival which was the mumbai festival of 2005 she has also revived the dying tribal puppetry art form of the village pinguli and helped establish a source of livelihood for its tribal puppeteers next up we have miss philippa k who has been a specialist in travel in india since 1998 She has spent 13 years living in India and is the founder of Indian Experiences, which is a consultancy to the Indian travel trade, training on product development and the unique experiences that India has to offer. 
She is also the author of Escape to India, a fictional tale set in the Kanha National Park in Madhya Pradesh. Our third panelist is Miss Marilyn Ward, who is a professional travel writer. She has spent more than six years of the last 14 in India and now lives in Rishikesh. Though Canadian by birth, Marilyn considers India to be her sole culture. With her travel blog, Breathe, Dream, Go, and her custom travel company, India for Beginners, she tries to encourage and help other travelers to go after their dreams. And finally, we have Mr. Vaibhav Chauhan, who is the director and founding member of Sahapedia, who has trained in managing and conserving heritage. He looks after resource development, outreach, and operations of Sahapedia. Vaibhav initiated and led India Heritage Walks and India Heritage Walks Festival, an award-winning network of heritage experiences, which seeks to bring people closer to their local heritage and culture. I'm really excited today to have this discussion with all of you. And to get things started, I have one question that I would love to ask all four of you. Uh, and you know, perhaps we can get the discussion going with that. And the question is, uh, if you could tell us which has been your single favorite experience while traveling in India for your work and why. So uh, whichever one of the four of you would like to go first. Uh, Shall I start? Yeah, sure, Philippa. Um, I have to say that's a really difficult question. <laughs> um, you know, when you travel to India extensively yeah. like I do, um, there are so many diverse different experiences. Um, you know, and people always ask me, you know, which is my favorite place or my favorite destination? And the, the diversity makes it such a difficult question. So what I thought is I'd share with you my first most memorable experience um, of India, which was 22 years ago. And, you know, which is very much now coming back into the fore today. Um, and when I first started specializing in, in India, I started with the South. Okay, so um, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu and Kerala. And it was 22 years ago, and I was shown an extraordinary array of monuments and, you know, things to do from the backwaters to the Sri Manakshi Temple. But I felt that I was being showing, shown a surface product. I didn't feel that I was really getting under the skin of, of the culture of the country. And one day I'd, I was chatting to a guy behind reception in one of the hotels I was staying at in Tamil Nadu, and I kind of mentioned my, my frustration to him. And he said, okay, tomorrow I'm going home to my village. Why don't you come with me? So I did, you know, and I went off with him to his village and it was pre-smartphone days, thank goodness. Um, you know, so that I wasn't com you know, just concerned with photographing the moment. I spent half a day in this village and they'd never seen a Westerner before in the village. And as I walked in, there were three ladies sitting on the veranda with um, sandalwood and turmeric powder covering their face, um, all chatting. There was another lady who was the village fortune teller who had these mini con shells and was doing somebody's fortune. Um, you know, another family came out and they invited me into their home and they gave me buttermilk. The chai waller came running across and gave me chai. You know, the local um, you know, Daba made some sort of lentil balls for me and, 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 you know, I just had such a wonderful experience of experiencing rural life, village life and the true hospitality of India. You know, that's, that, that's what I've always believed and I think that this moment has stuck with me as really, you know, learning to embrace the, the culture of the people of India. You know, I, I have a tagline that monuments create the backdrop but people create the experiences. And I think going off into a village and just meeting the people and experiencing true, heartfelt, humbling Indian hospitality is something that's stuck with me for, for the last 22 years. Wow, that was indeed a very powerful experience. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, it, it shows with the vividness that you remember it. And uh, thanks a lot for sharing that, uh, Philippa. And without uh, smartphone images. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> yes. Uh, Vaibhav sir, would you like to go uh, next? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ayush, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, organizers, for this wonderful uh, event. So I would start with the recent one, you know. Um, 
I mean, just before the lockdown, I got to know from one of my colleagues that she was, I mean, her uh, entry topic was, you know, called uh, a place called Barat. Now this place, you know, and I just thought of accompanying her. I said, this sounds interesting. Let's go there. So this place is uh, only 200 kilometers from Delhi, not even 200 kilometers. And the fer periphery of this uh, national park called uh, Sariska. Now, you would imagine, you know, loads of people go to Sariska, but, you know, not many even know about this place called Bharat. Now, this place Bharat is uh, the, uh, is the uh, Virat Nagar of, uh, this place is also called Virat Nagar, so this is the Virat Nagar of Mahabharata. So, all the places, so this is the place where, you know, all the Pandavas were hiding, you know, and, you know, so many you know, kind of places there are which are like associated with, you know, uh, their hiding. But to my surprise, I, you know, I found that there were two Ashokan inscriptions and uh, a very big uh, uh, Buddhist monastery. Now, I would say that this is the nearest Buddhist site from Delhi and nobody knows about it. I mean, I can just spend hours talking about this place. I mean, I would recommend if you're in Delhi, please visit this place, you know, called Virat Nagar, you know amazing site it is and you know recently when i was talking to one of my professors i was told that the inscription which was found there from ashoka is is so important in the history of you know the uh, in the history of the modern empire that at some point of time you know uh, people were thinking that uh, they, that ashoka didn't exist in india uh, they were attributing him to i think uh, sri lanka if i'm not wrong but the inscription here for the first time said that he is the uh, ruler who rules Kalinga. So, I mean, so many sites like that, uh, you know, in India, and, and this is what we are trying to do at India Heritage Walks, you know. Uh, you know, when we started India Heritage Walks uh, three years, three and a half years back, my idea was that, you know, because primarily Sapita is an online uh, resource, uh, you know, on culture. Uh, our, I, I realized that for many people, entry point to culture is through their experiences like me. I mean, my understanding of culture is through actually experiencing uh, you know, it firsthand. So this is how we started and, you know, and I'm happy to share that you know, the network is growing like uh, anything. And our strength is two tier two tier three cities. We are 60 plus cities strong now. And uh, largely these are like local champions which kind of you know, help us Grow. Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you, Vavu, sir. And uh, next up, may I request uh, Marilyn? Uh... Thank you very much. And um, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, be part of this. Um, it's really exciting to talk about travel in India, my favorite topic and my passion for sure. And I have to say, um, I was really, um, really inspired by Dr. Nadrenda's, excuse my, I'm not sure I'm getting his name right, but his uh, speech at the beginning of this session was extremely inspiring to me. And I've made a lot of notes and I, I can almost think of nothing else because for me, um, a big draw is the spirituality of India. And it all, since I, you know, I came here as a yoga student originally, so um, listening to him talk has really inspired me. And in fact, I have changed the, my answer because of him. And um, I would say uh, in this moment, inspired by him, I would just like to mention my experience of uh, actually attending the uh, Kumbh Mela in uh, Haridwar in 2010, which was, I believe, the Maha Kumbh Mela. And uh, I was staying in an ashram just about 14 kilometers down the river from Haridwar and I had the experience of getting up at before dawn in the dark and walking with uh, Swamiji the founder uh, Swami Brahmdev and walking into Haridwar you know in the dark 14 kilometers through forests at first along the river through small ashrams and then as we got closer of course we, we were joined by throngs of people and uh, we finally made it all the way into Harkipuri um, for the, on the auspicious day when what I've heard is that 10 million people walked into Haridwar that day. 
And so I actually had a dip in Harkipuri on the, at the auspicious time. And, um, you know, that's obviously such a blessing in itself. But then I had a even um, almost equal experience in that I got separated from my group and I got lost. This is kind of a long story, but I'll make it short. I got separated from my group and I got lost in the middle of the Kumailit, surrounded by 10 million people on a very, very hot day in April. And I had a moment of definitely the peak moment of sheer terror of my life when I realized they were closing Harkipuri because it would, the Naga Sadhus were coming in and they had to clear it. And so I made my way to the media tower. I had a media pass and I thought I would be safe. And I got to the media tower and for whatever reason, uh, the guards would not let me up. They wouldn't let me onto the tower. And so there I was standing in the middle of Harkipuri. It was, you know, had been 44 degrees the day before. Uh, 10 million people were coming, you know, towards this um, center of the uh, town and I had to leave with everything shut down and I didn't know how to get back. I'd walked in the dark 14 kilometers and I, I honestly can tell you that that moment was sheer terror. And I knew that this was almost, almost a life and death situation where I had to get myself, you know, out of that situation I, it, somehow. And I, I really, I'll never forget that moment of, of kind of, you know, gritting my teeth and grounding myself, but also asking for guidance to get me, to get me back, you know, to get me through this situation. And I just started walking and I didn't know where I was going, but I just followed clues, followed signs. And sure enough, a couple, an hour or two later, I got back to the ashram and I walked in just before noon to the ashram and I remember people were just getting ready for lunch and they were just you know walking around and everything seemed kind of normal you know except one thing which was me I was changed by that experience and uh, I mean deeply and forever changed and so I guess um, that would be my most profound travel experience and uh, experience with the culture and spirituality of India. Wow, um, that was uh, you know quite special, Madeline. And I can totally relate with you. Like uh, Mahakumbh has also given me some of my favorite travel memories, and and I think that's that's the thing about it and India in general. It's this like so often puts you out of your comfort zone, and then like if you go with the flow, it uh, you you reach somewhere which is very special. So into thanks. into another into another dimension, which is exactly. why this which is why this panel is so aptly named. Yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more. So thanks uh, thanks for sharing that. And uh, may I now ask uh, Miss Rashmi uh, Rashmi Ji to share her experience. Uh, Ma'am, you are on mute. If you can unmute yourself. Sorry, my bad. No. Everybody, I uh, want to thank uh, Center for Power for this opportunity for, for me to share my experiences. And coming back to your question, um, Ayush, that it's very, like um, Philippa said, it's very difficult, you know, to uh, pinpoint any one particular uh, experience. But um, since I started wo uh, my work, work with Culture Angan, I have had the opportunity to travel in rural areas and uh, I've always traveled by myself. So some, I would uh, have villagers calling me and saying that, Madam, please come and see our space. And, you know, we would like to also develop and we would also like to work. And I would say, okay, fine. And when it, there was an opportunity, I would travel. And mostly I have the first initial visits that were done, I have done by myself. And many people have asked me that oh, you're a, a lady, a woman, and you travel alone uh, in the country. And uh, don't you get worried or don't you get scared? And uh, I, I want to tell this, that rural India is safe. I mean, I have traveled really uh, to some remote places, you know, and uh, beautiful places. And they are very safe. And people are very kind. People are so loving. People are so hospitable. I mean, 
um, nowhere is I have found that somebody has said that oh, there is no food or there is no place to stay or if, even spaces places where there are no hotels or anywhere we have stay I have stayed in somebody's home uh, on the floor sleeping with them having food with them and that has been amazing and one particular journey I know these people from Manoharpur which is in Jharkhand uh, this village is next to Saranda forest now Saranda forest is a beautiful forest and uh, they had they were calling me for years you know like madam please visit us madam please visit us and um, I, I decided finally that okay fine we will and this was in 2014 this was in 2014 and we I flew to Ranchi and I live in Bombay so imagine I am from Bombay and Bombay is such a multicultural uh, city and coming going from Bombay I flew into Ranchi and these and I don't know them at all. I haven't even seen them because I've only spoken to them on the phone and these two gentlemen were there they had come to receive me and there was their way they said okay we will now start so 6.30 in the evening journey and on the way they said you know there was so much of rain and this was in the month of May and they say that there was so much of rain barish bahut ho thi. there was so much of rain that the normal road is shut down so we have to take a detour so we are going from we are crossing the border into Orissa and then again crossing the border into Jharkhand you know so we are going to be uh, uh, traveling like that I had no clue at all and when we started our ride and it started to pour and it was pouring heavily and no clue where we were going and soon it was dark it was midnight and I had no clue where we were going and suddenly we are just stopped we are just stopped because there is like a huge queue of uh, traffic jam on this road and uh, there is some uh, issue that has happened with the villagers and there is some fight going on and in the middle of nowhere with these strange people I'm in this vehicle, it's raining outside and I'm just waiting. And like Marilyn said, I want to also echo that same thought. I mean, always there is a higher power who looks after you. And I only closed my eyes at that time and I said, just let me be safe. And, uh, uh, and I was, I mean, those two men they, and their driver, uh, the three men and with me in the car and pouring rain outside and middle of the night and uh, no uh, uh, range at all but then we reach their house and their wives and everybody are waiting for us and there is this hot meal waiting and they immediately tell us madam ja ke nahiye, go and take a shower and then uh, you know we'll serve you food and then everything was fine you know but that journey from Ranchi to Manorpur in the night that night journey has really stayed with me and I was not terrified I mean actually in that moment I was also very sleepy so half of the time I was dozing off but I was also knowing in my heart that I'll be taken care of and that's what my travels have made me realize that it is fine it is fine to not know where you're going it is fine to not uh, know that oh Will there be food available? Will there be bislary water, mineral water available? Will there be a nice hotel available? It's fine if you don't know. Sometimes it's best that you just start on the journey. And that is what is Trevor's traversing dimensions mean. You know, that it just, you just go and let things happen and you experience. And that really builds you, makes you. Thank you. Well. Wow. Thanks a lot, uh, Rashmiji. And, uh, you know, again, like completely agree. It's it's that uh, one of the things that travel really teaches is that, that idea of letting go, right, yeah. which becomes so important in the overall scheme of life in general. I mean, there are so many factors you that are beyond your control. And to some extent, and like in, in today's time and age, we're all after sort of, you know, taking control, taking control. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, there are there are some things which are beyond our control. And if you can be, if one can be comfortable with just, you know, going with the flow, uh, it's, it's really a special thing that comes in handy and, and I totally agree that, you know, travel in India uh, really uh, equips you with that skill. So, absolutely, absolutely. And the next day, the Saranda Forest visit was just amazing. You know, it's so <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Nice. So that's great. Uh, so, uh, and next up, I had a question. 
web for you that uh, you know we we talk about uh, india's soft power uh, traversing dimensions through travel uh, but then there are also like whenever there is this discussion around uh, you know indian heritage uh, the skeptic uh, the skeptics uh, you know rise up and i mean i i think the, not like uh, there's nothing wrong about it it's always good to question but the idea that you know what is its relevance in today's uh, time and age so if you could uh, you know in as per you uh, what has your experience uh, you know what does it say that uh, why study indian heritage why travel across india you know uh, what what are those life skills that one can learn uh, like a couple of them we just discussed and you know it, it would be great if you could elaborate more on that yeah so ayush uh, i think uh, we look at culture very linearly you know we have to culture is very non linear heritage is very non linear and multidisciplinary uh, like you i am also a trained engineer you know i was a chemical engineer who got into this now you know uh, if you see indian heritage is so multidisciplinary because as soon as you get into material and technology and the process you know every you know so many dimensions open up for example if you just visit say itra makers or the perfume makers of kannauj right i mean when i visited them i realized he knew more chemistry than me the gentleman knew more chemistry than me right and i think this is what we have to propagate you know i think travel definitely but i think we have to also align with the education uh, system here in india because when when we were i mean doing our sciences we were not allowed to interact uh, with the arts faculty that much and this is how we treat you know um, our subjects uh, you know in isolation but i think what heritage does is to you know is it can kind of opens up right so whether it's metallurgy i mean whether it's uh, you know the pigments you know of wall paintings i mean i think rather than just making simple itineraries we should really think of that for example uh, say wall paintings of the uh, wall painting traditions of uh, north india now if you as soon as you choose one entry point you can just you know open up uh, as far as the material is con- uh, concerned and what all materials were you know chosen and why they were chosen technology what technology they were using you know it's not only it which is technology right uh technology is the know how is the process you know and they were so and these were not kind of you know perfected overnight i mean this is the accumulated knowledge of thousands of years right so i think we have to really think uh, from the multidisciplinary lens uh, and not uh, look at from a linear lens and as soon as we de- do that you know i think heritage opens up and this is what we are trying to do from india heritage walks also that you know how to make heritage interesting for everyone not just connoisseurs not just you know converts i should say uh, you know uh, i would say for everyone and i think as soon as we just kind of you know open up we'll have more people following uh, india heritage indian heritage yeah i think uh, totally makes sense like the more multidisciplinary we can get and you know the the maximum sort of learning uh, one can draw and uh, you know maximize the the benefit of exploring uh, indian heritage uh, in fact along those lines uh, rashmi ji i have a question for you uh, you know you worked extensively in the like in the traditional art space so uh, what kind of synergy potential uh, do you see between travel and traditional arts in india and you know how can it be like uh, webups has said that uh, you know it would be great if there would like wall paintings could be studied and um, you know so how how can uh, let's say these two disciplines uh, interact better um yes so um, how how do we uh, make our so when we speak about traditional arts these are the rural arts okay i i am not traditional arts as in just bharatnatyam or kathak or all but at the same time also say uh, the shepherds of sangli you know or the uh, uh, you know the pinguli uh, puppeteers 
you know the they are there or the uh, uh, the uh, pad painter painting painters of uh, rajasthan you know pad is a uh, uh, art form so how do we bring them into our mainstream you know otherwise did, uh, uh, in these today's like i have this one of the artists from alwar who uh, uh, keeps uh, calling me and talking to me and he says that now there is no work nobody wants to know his work he is a karagiri he is a embroidery uh, uh, embroiderer and he says there is no work so how do we bring him into our mainstream or do we just say that oh these people have no space today in this today because today we are now with corona virus we are all digital suddenly so how do we bring them into the mainstream because they do have a space they do have a equal right in on on this planet so and they need to also earn their livelihood and they have to be made viable to today's uh, lifestyles you know so tourism is the best medium i feel which can do that because what happens is but not the kind of tourism that i have seen in rajasthan i mean pardon me nothing wrong i'm not, I'm not uh, uh, saying anything negative here but yes there are negative uh, impacts of tourism as well and the way the children of kalbelia dancers or the ghumar artists they go to the hotels and the small small children will dance that's that's negative impact of tourism but in a sustainable way we can have tourism impacting the traditional arts so uh, for example uh, if i can give my, with my work only so um, this pinguli puppet village it is a it, they were the puppeteers uh, the, from the pre uh, independence period and before the independence they were as spies uh, as uh, espionage uh, work they would do but after independence there was no work for them and they went into beggary beggary and stone cutting and grass cutting and all of that and that art was lost so in 2006 when we had met with the main puppeteers there were just two alive at that time uh, everything was rolled up and kept it in their attic they were not following the art and all so then we had to really persuade them to restart and we had to like invest some uh, monetary help we need had to give them and set up a small museum and so what we did was we brought their original paintings original puppets we set up a small museum gave them the impetus then we got nid designers to come and do design workshop and skill upgradation because they had lost their skills you know and then we got product designs made you know so products made so that tourists who came can buy things from these puppeteers and that's how we started the entire process and today this 2020 i'm very very happy to say that the children the future next generation have come back to their art craft they have taken it up uh, from their old fathers or, and grandfathers they are uh, uh, taking the art forward and today pinguli is on the tourist map you know all the tourists who visit sindhudurg they go to the pinguli village, uh, village they sit with the puppeteers they understand their art they see their puppetry they can no dc train travelers it is there as one of the listing on the deccan odc train the pinguli uh, puppet village and that's a very positive step and today we are doing a project with british council where we have uh, uh, uk based trainers Uh, collaborate with the pinguli puppeteers and uh, this, uh, create the training modules so that their the skills can be further enhanced and they can further create products and designs which can be then connected to the european and uh, uh, international markets so the market is this is how we can connect digital you know this is how we can connect travel you know with the traditional arts and if this kind of a module or this kind of a methodology is used in all of our traditional arts then no artist artist needs to call up call us up and say that bhai ji kaam hi nahi hai there is no work you know aap kuch madad karo i mean it's a very very sad situation i mean i can't imagine a bharatanatyam dancer ever calling and saying that bhai ji Rashmi ji we seem to have lost your audio. Han Can you hear me? Yes we can hear you now. Okay. 
so i was saying that this is how we can marry travel and the digital platforms and uh, by the way i have to say very proudly that now the trainings are all going to be done digitally on zoom so the pinguli puppeteers and the international uh, uh, trainers are going to come collaborate on zoom platform and uh, do the design workshops and which is great because this is the 21st century and this is how those puppeteers have come up but then they needed that hand holding so we need to do this hand holding to for our traditional arts and crafts and uh, tourism is the best best platform great uh, yeah i think i mean uh, that's that's actually a great insight that you've shared um firstly i mean uh, you know even even at rubru we've been trying to sort of uh, incorporate uh traditional art forms into our experiences and it's worked out uh, you know beautifully for us we have a community of more than 150 artists and we've seen every time like a traveler visits there and i i also resonate with that point that you made that instead of you know creating in organic settings like the artists going to the hotels and you know kids sometimes among them which which is anyway i mean you are not showcasing it in in its natural form and that's something that we have tried as well uh, you know actually going to the places where they work and because there are so many dimensions to their work which are connected to their workplace Absolutely. so yeah and we've seen you know travelers faces light up uh, but i think what what really interests me is your experience uh, you know during the pandemic times in making these things digital because that's something that we have not uh, honestly been able to work on as much we've taken our experiences virtual and uh, we've had artists some of them join us especially the ones who have who are into performing arts so musicians poets and um, you know singers but uh, but i would really love to connect uh, with you offline and you know yeah, hopefully sure. get yeah so how can we yes definitely. so thanks thanks a lot for uh, for that and um, philippa so my next question uh, you know would be to you like rashmi ji shared her experience uh you know and uh, there is a bit that i could share of what we are doing at rubiru but i think you are working in the like at a much more sort of 30000 feet view um you know you're looking at the entire gambit of experiences in india so uh, would love to hear from your perspective you know how have you seen experiential travel evolve uh, over the course of 13 years that you've been looking at it in india and uh, you know what are some of the low hanging fruits so to speak that you think that hey if these can be fixed uh, you know it can bring about uh, a, a a disproportionate impact um what was really interesting for me is obviously i started you know doing this 22 years ago um and then you move to india and you live in india and you know you develop a lot of you know friends from the local communities and then there's also the expat crowd and what have you um and what was fascinating for me is seeing the the difference between what is offered to tourists on an inbound level compared to how domestic people travel you know and all my friends who are travel writers and bloggers and whatever um you know and and i met you know fortune you know invited to speak at bloggers conferences and things and and seeing how you know local people travel and it's very different from the experience that the inbound tourist gets Now back in 2014 I was invited to join a company as their curator of experiences and I chose the the method of going into every city and doing the sightseeing in each of those cities and what I discovered was that sightseeing hadn't changed in the 20 odd years that I've been that I've been promoting India you know you were taken around the same monuments you know cities were looked at well you know jodhpur is a one night destination you go in you see the marang before you maybe have a walk through the old town and then you leave you know um again with jodhpur it's a two night destination you go you see the fort the palace the observatory and you leave and you know i lived in jodhpur and i had an amazing um guy in jodhpur who had set up doing walking tours and you, you realize that there is just so much more to these cities than than is offered so i would go and i i go to each of these cities and on day 1 i'd go out with a standard guide and say okay show me the city and then i would spend another 5 6 7 days there depending on you know which which particular city it was and really explore exactly what there is to do there um and then you realize that you know it's it's 
I could curate, you know, 10 days with experiences. Let, let's, let's take Jaipur as a classic example, or Jaipur. I could curate 10 days of experiences for you in Jaipur, you know. Um, it's got everything for, you know, if you're an adventure junkie, you can go trekking, you can go horse riding, you can go on hot air balloon safaris, you can go on jeep safaris. Um, you know, if you're into arts and crafts, there's the blue pottery there, there's the block printing. You know, there's there's so much more. There's the markets and the bazaars. There's the jewellery. You know, for goodness sake, I keep quoting that at any point, you know, one point in time, eight percent of the world's jewels went through Jaipur. You've got all these incredible craftsmen. You've got the street food. You know, you could spend a week just in Jaipur, but that's not what was being offered. You get these set packages that are being offered time and time again, and I then got into quite a a. a, a a heated discussion, shall we say, um, with a bunch of your, what I call your classic, you know, DMZs um, at a, a trade event. And they said, no, 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 but Philippa, you're wrong. People don't want to see that. What they want to see is, is you know, what they've heard of. And I said, no, you're wrong. They want to see what's on their itinerary. Okay. So if they have on their itinerary that you're going to see the Amber Fort and, and the City Palace and the Observatory, that's what they want to do. But if you put on there, we're going to take you on a walking tour to, to you know, see all the temples in the old city, or we're going to take you into the Crafts Bazaar to meet the jewellers, or we're going to take you on a, on a, on a tour of, of Jaipur's food. That's what they will want to do. And those are the things that need to be offered, you know. So then I felt, and like you say, you know, I, I look at it from a, you know, I, I have to look at the whole country. You know, I, I train travel companies on the whole country, you know. Um, and, and then it was a case of, well, you know, tour operators and everybody who follows me on social media and there's a lot of the travel industry that follows me on social media and a lot of inbound as well as you know domestic tour operators dmcs and they started saying to me look we love what you do we love the way that you explore the country we love the things that you discover that's what we want for our clients how can we get our clients to do those and i think getting your traditional you know travel companies to, to change their, their ethos was very difficult but that's when you know, people like Rubaru, you know, all these companies started coming up to me and saying, look, you get it. You understand it. You get what we're talking about. How can we get out to market? You know, and, and you know, a lot of these companies like yourselves, you know, the, the, the guy who I started doing my Jaipur walks with, this was 10 years ago, was it was a former banker. But just he just hated the way that Jaipur was being portrayed to the tourists. You know, he knew what his city could offer. And then what started emerging were all these, and I, and I believe the future of tourism lies with people not necessarily from a tourism background and the youth and people who innovate. Because, you know, again, it's, it's people like yourselves who, it's like, okay, we're gonna offer walking tours. You know, we're passionate about Jaipur, you know, no footprints, passionate about Mumbai, all these different companies who really want to showcase their cities, but get under the skin and meet the people. And that makes it so much more sustainable when you're visiting you know, the, the street vendors, when you're visiting the jewelry makers, when, you know, as Rashmi said, you're, you're taking people out and you're encouraging them to, to sustain their traditional arts and crafts by taking people on these very experiential journeys. And, and, and that's what people, you know, particularly, I think now that, that the traveller, that's what they're looking for. So for me, you know, I just love the fact that there's all these, you know, what we, you know, we've sort of termed them experience providers. You know, it's why Indian Experiences was put together, because all these providers started coming to me and saying, we, we, we want to get out to market. How can we get our message out there? All the tour operators and DMCs were saying to me, we love what you do. That's what we want for our clients. How can we find these people? You know, so that's how Indian Experiences came into being, was just a platform where, you know, we could find all these amazing experience providers, put them on our, our website. And so all the tour operators and DMCs just had access and could find the experiences that they're looking for and be inspired by all these, all these new experiences. Um, and I also think, you know, sort of just on a slightly different level, is that India is very much missold. And this is very much for inbound, you know, domestic um, tourists travel very, very differently from the inbound tourists. But I think India is massively missold and it's missold as, you know, the golden triangle or, you know, you've got the golden triangle equivalent in Kerala or Goa. You know, it's sold as a bunch of monuments and it's, you know, the experience that so many people get is just a boring history lesson and then they're dragged off into shops, you know. But people don't appreciate 
the sheer diversity of what India has to offer. So, you know, I, I do all these rebranding talks, you know, rebranding India. Let's talk about India as a wellness destination. Let's talk about India as a wildlife destination. Let's talk about India as a family destination. You know, my nephews and nieces came out to India 10 years ago. There were four, you know, four of them aged between 10 and 20. They still say it's the best trip they've ever done. You know, it, it blew them away. You know, India is an adventure destination. You know, I, I love the adventure. I love the jeep safaris and the treks and the whitewater rafting and the horse riding and you know there's so many soft adventure opportunities there you know that i started doing this whole series of talks on rebranding india let's think about india differently you know from a you know and for me i think that message has to be got out there but for me it's all people like um you know um yourself um who are curating these companies who are coming up and looking at tourism on a much more macro level, but a much more valuable level, I think, to sustainable tourism and to sustainability, and really showcasing the, the intricacies of a destination or a theme, whether it's art, whether it's food, whether it's textiles, you know, weaving. You know, and I couldn't do what I do if you guys hadn't, you know, sort of started emerging and started truly showcasing the experience, the experiential element to, you know, to, to, you know, tourists and travellers. So thank you all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Music yeah, to my ears, and, you brought me back to life, you know. <laughs> no, and, uh, you know, thank you in turn for, uh, you know, for helping spread the word about, uh, you know, what, uh, what we are doing, what a lot of people like us are trying to do. Uh, to to like you rightly said you know to to show India for what it really is and not just skim the surface. So yeah, I mean thanks for those insights, uh, Philippa. And uh, I think we've we've sort of been touching the last couple of questions, touching about uh, the supply side of uh, travel. Now, um, Marilyn, if I could ask you, uh, you know, you being like an uh, a through and through traveler and having explored India so much, uh, you know what what one or two tips would you like to share uh, with the audience uh, to you know make the best of their journeys across india hi can you hear me uh, yes we can hear you um i had a uh, a presentation would be would now be a good time for the presentation or um, yeah, sure. I think we can do that. It's, uh, we'll anyway, keep this as the last question. I think we have about uh, three to four minutes. So, um, we can possibly quickly go through the presentation and you can, uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Because, um, uh, th that's a really tough question to answer. So I, I wanted to kind of, um, express use some visual elements, use as well. some visuals, yeah. sure, um, sure. definitely, definitely. And uh, so if you can, if you can start the presentation and then just change the slides, is that, a, would that be okay? Um, actually, I don't have, yeah, it's. Yeah, that's it. It's there, yes. Yeah, so, um, so as I was introduced earlier, I'm a travel writer and blogger, and um, I was asked to talk about uh, writing India's travel diaries. So I hope that I, this also is able to answer your question. Um, so you can just, you can just keep, you know, changing the slides every few seconds and I'll just, um, so this is my blog. It's called Breathe, Dream, Go. And I've been publishing this for about 11 years and I'm on all the social media channels. So as I've uh, traveled across India over the last 11 years, um, I've been publishing this blog. And um, as I said, you can just keep going every few seconds. Yeah. So this is just more of an introduction to me and I'm, uh, a blogger. I'm from Canada and I've traveled across India for at least six years and I've also founded India for Beginners Custom Tours. Now I want to say that um, when I first came to India in December 2005, I came as a seeker, which means um, I was open to the experience and I saw everything that happened to me as a teacher. And uh, on that trip, um, I've just got a bunch of photos. I traveled the length of breadth of India for six months uh, from Dharamshala to Delhi, from Kerala to Chennai. I took long train, tr train rides, volunteered to work with Tibetan refugee children, studied yoga, had Ayurvedic treatments, 
stayed in an ashram, lived with an Indian family, went to the Taj Mahal, of course, swam in the ocean and was hugged by Amma. And then I found my spiritual home in the Rishikesh um, area. And so I blogged the whole time um, here um, when I was traveling. Uh, that's how it all got started. Um, and so what I've discovered was that India turned out to be my creative muse, the inspiration I needed to overcome a lifetime of writer's block. So I kept traveling um, throughout India. And yes, and here we go. I'm trying to capture the beauty and magic of India. What is it about India? So I've been trying to answer that question for 15 years. I've poured out millions of words, taken thousands of pictures. Um, it's not easy, but I'll just say that there's something very special about India. It catches some visitors, some foreigners, and we never want to leave. And I think it's a unique combination of the antiquity of the culture, the living history, the palpable spirituality, uh, intense sensory stimulation, and of course, most importantly, uh, the warm smiles and big hearts of the people. There's a quote from the film, The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, that I think sums it up quite well. What is it about India? It's the light, the colors, the smiles, the way people see life as a gift, a privilege, and not a right. All life is here. And a spiritual teacher once told me that India is the soul of the world. So I think it's this uniqueness that makes India so transformative. And um, I just finally want to say thank you to India. And my final words are, you don't visit India, you experience India. If you let it affect you, you will be forever changed. And I think that's probably my top tip, is let the experience of India change you. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a very astute uh, tip. Uh, like one line to sum it up that you know be open experience and I, I love how you sort of you know gave that checklist of all the diverse kind of things that you've done uh, really getting under the skin of uh, of a city doing what the locals do with the locals staying where they stay and stuff and I uh, yeah I think uh, there's there's a lot of wisdom in that way of travel so thanks for sharing that uh, Marilyn and uh, you're welcome yeah <laughs> In fact, we're now uh, close to the you know ending uh, sort of time of our panel discussion, and uh, you know I would I would like to thank all of you uh, for sharing these you know brilliant insights. I think uh, we talked about a lot of things um, from like you know how to travel in India. What are some of the things that one can really look forward to? How it really facilitates uh, the you know traversing of dimensions. And uh, I suppose if I can sort of sum it up, uh, it's being open, uh, you know, as two way, two things, I suppose, uh, one from the traveler's point of view, which is to be open, to go with the flow, uh, to do what the locals do. And uh, sort of, uh, yeah, I suppose, you know, travel like a Yatri uh, does, uh, instead of traveling like a tourist, uh, you know, aspire to become a Yatri, I suppose. And uh, from the from the supply side, uh, you know, from uh, for all of us, uh, you know, several notes that I got to make, uh, you know, being an experienced provider uh, myself, I suppose uh, there's uh, you know there's a lot that we can do by sort of enabling the travelers, the yatris, to seamlessly undertake such journeys. And uh, also, Rashmi ji mentioned how uh, you know things have. Uh, been transformed to the digital space as well, especially the work with uh, with the craftsmen, and uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, like lots of great insights uh, through that discussion. And uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, you know all the four panelists, and uh, for the audience to being such a lovely audience. And you know, I see some uh, good discussions uh, happening in the chat box as well. So so thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, over to the team at uh, CSP. And thank you, Ayush, for uh, such brilliant uh, discussion and questions. It was really nice. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi ji. It was a pleasure. I mean, yeah. thank you so much, Ayush. As uh, Rashmi uh, ji mentioned, it was indeed a wonderful session that you curated together. And to all the panelists, 
who shared their experiences of traveling across India, discovering India during their travels. I think that's what a journey helps us to, as Ayush also said, that becoming a Yatri rather than a tourist. Uh, there are multiple questions, multiple discussions that can continue forever, but we'll have to come put this session to a stop and move on to the next one. But before that, I'd like to thank all of you. Uh, and we hope that post COVID, there is again an upsurge in tourism uh, with newer and more uh, conscious way of traveling as well. So that will be something that we'll have to adapt as travelers um, and also for the people who are providing that kind of a services. So new dimensions there as well when we talk about traversing dimensions. Uh, thank you so much to all of you. And we now move on to our next session, uh, which is India's Global Connect. Uh, I hand over to Vijayalakshmi ji for the session beginning. Thanks. Vijay, can you please play the uh, video from ICCR Russia, please? Rabindranath Tagore ki kavita nahi mangta Nahi mangta Prabhu vipati se mujhe bachao tran karo vibda me nirbhik rahu me itna hai bhagwan karo Nahi mangta dukh hatao dukhon ko me aap jitlo aisi shakti pradan karo vibda me nirbhik rahu me itna hai bhagwan karo koi jab na madad ko aaye mere himmat Tut na jaye, jag jab dhok par dhok hade, or chot par chot lagaye. Apne man me har na mano. Aise naat vidhan karo, vibda me nirbhik raho me. Itna hai bhagwan karo. Nahi mangta hu Prabhu meri, jivan neya par karo. Par utar jao apne bal, apne bal. Itna hai kartar karo. Nahi mangta khat khatao. Mere sir ka boj ghatao, ap boj apna sambhailo, aisa bal sanchar karo, vibda me nirbhik raho me, itna hai bhagavan karo. Sukh ke din me shish navakar, tum ko aradhu karuna kar, o vipati ke adha kar me, jagat khan se jab mujhe rula kar, tum par karne lagu na sanchai, ye kitni svikar karo, vibda me. Nirbhik rahume, itna hai bhagavan karo.